It's more and more common these days to find hymns in our hymnals that are in a folk style. Now, in our series of lessons, we've seen lots of hymns that are written in a choral style where there are four parts. But in many of our hymnals, we have accompaniments that have the left hand arpeggiated, and it's obviously a folk style accompaniment that the organist or accompanist has an arpeggiated harmony under it. The hymn I have here, Green Sleeves, sung to the text, What Child Is This?, is an example from a modern hymn, though, where we have chord symbols written in. And although this is written in a block style and could be sung SATB, I think the hymnal publisher is acknowledging that there is a need for chord symbols and for people accompanying in folk styles. So here we have the chord symbols. These are the actual harmonies of what falls below these symbols. We have E minor, D major, G major, and so forth. If we were going to take this and try to make a folk arrangement out of it, but play it on the organ, one of the common ways to do it is to take the melody, as we have in the past, and solo it out. In this case, I would solo it out in the right hand, moving the soprano line up an octave. And then underneath it, instead of reading these block chords, I would create a new rhythmic pattern based on the harmony so that we have the same harmony but in a different texture. And this approaches the texture of a strummed guitar. And in fact, in this piece, with the origins being so early, we might find that uh, it makes a, an allusion back to the original lute and recorder that might have been played with this hymn. Listen to the hymn for just a moment as block chords. Now, in the folk style, I would take my accompanimental left hand up to another manual on different registration, and there would be an arpeggiation simply of E minor, D major, G major, with the harmony shifting at the appropriate moment. This approaches that strumming or string feeling that is in the folk style. In some hymnals, we have not only chord symbols that analyze for us the harmonies at sight, we have guitar symbols, actual guitar ligatures, which are uh, indicative of where you put your fingers on the fret of the guitar. So as an aid to the guitarist, you'll find these as well. Those symbols are not really of importance to the organist. What are important are these harmonic indications because eventually, as you accompany more and more folk style music, you'll need to be able to take these symbols and read them, but also to look at hymns which have no chord symbols and analyze them at sight so that you can convert the accompaniment from chordal to arpeggiated. There are special chord symbols where we have a bass note that's requested that is different than the bass note of the harmony we're playing. For example, if we have an E in the pedal, but we have not an E harmony, you'd have a B minor chord with a slash and an E below it. And it would be in the context of a phrase that would be ending like this. Anytime you have a slash and a note, a single note written under a chord symbol, you play the note under the slash in the pedal or the bass and you use the harmony above the slash to go with it. Uh, these are dissonances, but they are stylistic in folk music. Another way to vary the texture in folk-like accompaniments is to use something that had its origins in Mozart's time. 
the Alberti bass. Alberti bass is a harmony that's divided up with the lowest note first, the highest note, and then alternating with the middle note. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four. Low, high, middle, high. That makes an Alberti bass line. And that's another way of arpeggiating and creating variety and texture. Of course, this comes from Mozart. We all know the piano sonata. So these textures have been known to us, not just in contemporary folk music, but they go back for centuries. So if we took the Alberti bass and consolidated it, we'd have, what do you think? What we started with in most of our hymns, block chords. Knowing the harmonies and arpeggiating them in a folk style is not the only thing you have to remember. Depending on the acoustics that you're playing into, which may be rather dry, you may want to slightly overlap the arpeggiated figures as what I call a sticky legato. Here's the difference. And now with slight overlaps of legato. Overlapping can make the folk style seem a little less choppy and uh, more natural. While it can be challenging at first to adapt folk music to the organ, once you get it going, you might find that the organ adds an extra dimension to folk music. Because most organs have swell shutters and you can vary the swell shutters as you play, you can give dynamic lilt and expression to an arpeggiated folk style accompaniment. We've only seen just one illustration of adapting folk styles to the organ. There are many more that you can do. For example, while we were using the soprano melody up an octave, you could take that melody and move it to the tenor or the bass, even putting it in the pedal if you like, and using your right hand or even both hands arpeggiate your accompaniment. Whatever you do, make sure that your rhythms of arpeggiation are clear. When a congregation is supposed to sing with you, you have to be sure that the rhythm is always clear, and this includes all of your accompanimental patterns. Mm -hmm.